Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Downtown Greenville, Main Street Greenville, here on the Wave Channel 5 as we continue our town series. I'm Alex Warner, along with videographer Nick Schmidt today. We've come down here on the 400 block of South Broadway, and we've stopped at Granny's Corner and the owner, Julie Kesson. And uh, Julie, let's talk just a little bit about your background, how you got involved in this. Well, I originally been working at Greenville, or I worked at Whirlpool KitchenAid for 26 years. Had a very stressful job and decided I got to do something different with my life. So I thought, what am I going to do? So I had known Doris, who owned this shop, and she had the shop for nine years here in Greenville, and she always did my framing for me, and I've always had an interest in it. So I decided, hey, why don't I go talk to Doris? So I came in here and said, you know, I've got an interest in framing. Would you teach me how to do it? And I said, I'm not going to open a shop against you. I just got to figure out what I want to do different with my life. And this always had an interest with me. Let me ask you, now you're talking Doris. Doris who? Doris Anderson, who had the business before me. Was it called a Granny's Corner at yes. the time? Yes, it was called Granny's Corner. She started out in the corner in a house that was like catty corner from Mercer Bank right now. It was the colony. She right. started there, and that's how she got the name Corner. She uh. was a grandma. She's That's how she <laughs> originated her name. And so I bought the business. Well, then she came in. I came in, started training with her. And she showed me how to do it all. And then she says, how about if I just sell my business to you and I'll work for you part time because I'm about ready to retire. Well, here I am going from a nice salaried paying job at right. KitchenAid to going to the business side of it, which is the unknown. So I stood around with that decision for probably about a year or so. And then I said, what the heck? Go for it. <laughs> it didn't get any better. You know, it kept getting more stressful at Whirlpool. And I just kind of had this in the back of my mind that this is what I wanted to do. So I bought it from her and it's been very successful. And come this May, I'll have it for 10 years. Wow, you've been here 10 years already? Yeah. Now, I know you've moved locations, correct? Yes. It was originally started down there, like I said, right. at the corner. And then she had moved down by the Montage for three years. And then she moved across the street here at 418 South Broadway for three years. That's when I bought the business. And three years ago in February, I moved over here to 417 South Broadway, okay. across the street. And this used to be the Whelan Jewelers store? Correct. Did I say Correct. that? Yeah, yes. Whelan's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk a little bit. So you were at Whirlpool, but you said you're originally from up uh, south of Salon in Carthagena? Yes, I'm from Carthagena. Carthagena, Ohio, and I've made the trip to Greenville for now 36 years. Wow. Yeah. You started right out of junior high, right? Uh, yeah, you got yeah. that right, so don't do the math. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, uh, so you were down at, at Whirlpool uh, in a salary position then, so in the front office then, or what yes. did you do there? I was a material coordinator, and I coordinated a lot of the parts to get into the plant to keep the line running. Okay. Right. Well, that was a pretty stressful position then because I know they're really up their production yeah. out there over the years. So that business background kind of served you well coming in here because not only do you have to learn to do the framing, but you also got to run the business and it's you by yourself who's running the business, correct? Correct, correct. And in that position also when I was a material coordinator, I had the opportunity of getting a job at KitchenAid at the store. Uh -huh. And they ran a small business called Inspired Chef. And I kind of ran that for probably about a year, year and a half. And that was getting all the product in, shipping it out. And that lasted, that program lasted for like maybe two years. And then they phased that out. So then I went back to the plant. So I kind of did have a little bit of experience of running a business because it really wasn't my own, but it was Whirlpool's. Yeah. Now, how'd you happen to decide to stay located here in downtown? You said you've been over here three years or so in, yeah, in this location. How did you decide to stay in downtown area? I just always appreciated the downtown, like the looks, like the historic, like the atmosphere. Um, just always had an appreciation for the downtown of Greenville. Okay, that's interesting because, you know, you think a lot of times people, if they take over a business, they might move it where there's there's more parking or so forth. But I'll tell you what, downtown Greenville is unique and a lot of traffic flow back and forth through here, correct? Yes, yes. And we have tourism that comes in for the, for the KitchenAid plant. They have tour buses come in and we have a lot of tour buses or people just wandering around and... 
I have, you know, just people coming in, you associate with them and talk to them and find out what brings them to Greenville, and they just hear the word to come to Greenville because there's not a lot of downtowns that are revitalized like Greenville right. is. Yeah, yeah, and downtown Greenville is doing, Main Street Greenville is doing a great job of promoting that. So that's one of the reasons we do these shows. Well, okay, so we're talking about framing. So we're going to move back here in just a second, take a look at some of the frames and different services you offer that way. Then we're going to talk about all the other things you have here, because it's not just a frame shop, is it? That's correct. <laughs> I do lots of puzzles. As you can see, I've kind of gotten into the puzzles. I sell lots of puzzles. A lot of people are knowing that I have the assortment of puzzles that I have. I frame lots of puzzles. I have have um, Heritage Lace, which is a line of lace and doilies. I do have those and cards and stationery. Yeah, well, we're going to take a look at that in just a minute as you're watching uh, Main Street Greenville here as we take a look at Granny's Corner with Julie Kesson here. We'll be back in just a moment. We're going to take a look at the different uh, services offered here at Granny's Corner. And uh, behind us, uh, you said you have the ready-made frames. Is that where we call some of these? That's what we call these. Um, these are, I have a large assortment of different ready-made frames, which is the standard size frames. Your 8x10s, 11x14s, anything that is standard size. I carry a large assortment for anybody that would come in, need something done right away. Or if they don't want to order custom, then they can have a better look of what the whole picture is going to look like. Some people, if you just put the corner sample for a custom frame up, then they don't know what the whole picture is going to look like. So we have ready-mades are available, so if they just want to walk in, pick up a ready-made, or if they want me to put it together for them quick, I could do that. Um, but that's basically what I have in far as um, the ready-mades. Where, where do you order ready-made frames from? I mean, you've got different vendors that you use, I assume, and then do you go to like trade shows or just catalogs, online shopping? How do you, how do you decide which frames to hang out here for display? I do, do to go to trade shows, but the majority of them is I have suppliers that come in. I have salesmen that come in. They have show you the moldings. Um, and that's basically where I get most of them is from, is from my suppliers. Yeah. Now, do a lot of people come in and just buy the frame, take it home and frame it themselves? And then you say you can also put them together in a hurry if they have a standard size picture to fit the frames, correct? Correct. And if they don't have a standard size picture, then I can cut a mat and um, to accommodate their f picture to fit into the frame if they need it done right away. Or they can leave it and I have it turned around back to them in a week or two. Wow, that's a pretty quick turnaround time. Well, we're going to swing around, and so this is the ready-made stuff that people can come in, and it's right here. Standard size for pictures and different things that way. We're going to take a second and turn around and take a look at some of the other frames. And I mean, it almost looks like you've got like area rugs or quilts hanging on the <laughs> wall over here. So we'll turn around in just a second and take a look at those. Alex Warner here along with Julie Kesson, the owner of uh, Granny's Quarter. And Julie, we've turned the camera around. And back here then we have all these different, I mean, it does. It looks like an area rug or a curtain or something back here. I don't know how many different styles and colors you have, but there's got to be at least a several hundred, if not more. Yes, I have plenty of selection of custom-made frames. Anything to fit anybody's need. Um, it's... I get them from a couple different suppliers and I custom order it to your piece. And if you want like a shadow box, I have a thicker, wider frame for shadow boxing. Or if you just have a kid's artwork that you want done. A lot of times it's kind of nice to put in your house your own personal, what do you want to call it? Your own personal touch, touch, yes, and put your own artwork, put your kids' artwork up. That's more meaningful sometimes to some people than to just buy a picture from a regular store, something that somebody else might have or that everybody has, and just put your own personal touch on your own home and put your own personal pictures, whether it be photographs, artwork, or memorabilia. Yeah. Now, I see you've got all these different frames. What, what do you call these things? Are these just corner pieces, or what is all these this? These are corner samples, and this on here is all metal. So these would be all metal frames that is on this carousel. Yeah. And then the rest of them that are in the background, they're all wood frames. Yeah, and I see they, ha they come in different depths, too. So different size mats and so forth you can put different in there. Colors. and. Yeah, different colors, all kinds of colors. Colors is a big thing now, as a lot of people like to do 
colored frames. Now here I notice it says something, glass choices. What, and it says conservation clear museum glass. And it's got, what is all this? This is, shows you there's different kinds of glasses that you can get to put on your frames. It's either clear glass or non-glare glass. The non-glare keeps things from having a glare on them. It, like if you look at the picture in the, if you have a picture hanging on your wall and you have the window across from it, you'll see the glare of the window in your picture. So the non-glare cuts down on that. So you've got your regular clear, regular non-glare, then you have a conservation clear non-glare. The conservation keeps things from fading. Uh -huh. So if you have something that's really memorable, keepsake that you don't want to fade because fluorescent lights and the outside lights will fade things and so you have those two choices and then now they have a new glass called museum where it looks like there's no glass if you can see on this yeah. side you probably <laughs> can see but uh you this shows that there's a glass there there's glass there but it's museum and it looks like there's no glass and that's yeah, i'm standing the line. i'm standing close to it i didn't think there was a piece of glass here. i thought somebody had broken that or something but yeah, <laughs> a lot of people come in and they stick their finger in there thinking there's no glass but yeah there's a lot of choices of glass too that you can do there's i use map boards as far as the map boards that go around the frames or goes around the pictures everything i use is acid free i use everything acid free in here Okay, and then these mat boards. So, so a person comes in, they pick out the frame they like, and then they can pick out the glass they like, and then all sorts of different colors of matting then? Yes, yes. And then you customize that, to, uh, whether you want a thin mat or a wide mat, I if assume. Want, yes, or if you want one mat, two mats, three mats, yeah, it's uh, all custom to whatever the customer would like. Yeah. And then how about hanging? So if you sell the nails and the hooks and everything that people can hang with or not? Yes, or is that just a hardware store thing? Yeah, I do. And I put a wire hanger or a sawtooth on every picture. Yeah. So it's ready to hang whenever they bring it. I put paper on the back and close everything and I put a wire hanger or, yeah. or a sawtooth on. Let me ask you this. A lot of people just pound a nail on the wall. Is that a good thing to do to hang a picture that's got some value to it or is it better to have one of those hooks and, and the wire and things like that? I, I know because I've pounded a million walls, uh, nails in the wall and my wife gets on me all the time about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just depends. Um, you're normally should have a certain hanger to hang your picture on the wall. Is it better if you got a fairly good sized frame, say it's like a foot, foot and a half wide, is it better to have one nail or, or one hanger or two hangers to, to hold that in place? Probably two. It depends on the size of it, but it just depends on if you can get your nail into a stud. Yeah. And if you can't get into a stud, then you're better off with two and using extra support. Okay. Now I see over here, now not only do you sell the frames and things of that nature, but it, also you have just a lot of different uh, pictures people can just come in and buy if they, you know, if they like them, correct? Correct. I have a lot of prints that um, in-house that you can pick from, or if you don't see anything in here, I have catalogs where you can look through and you can order from the catalogs. Okay. Well, that works out great. Let's say this is kind of your workstation over here then, correct? Correct. So uh, how come the carpeting up here? The carpeting is to protect the frame. As you can see, I can show you this picture. Oh. Okay. This picture I was working on, as you work on it, you can put the carpet try on to, there. Try to get my mic here. <laughs> that, that protects the uh, picture and it protects the frame and the glass. So yeah, so there's no scratching of anything. So how, how do you start then? You put a backing down? This is a pretty solid back. What is that? That's a backing board. Okay. You got your frame. She picked the frame. She picked the glass. And that's, and that's just a, what glass is that? It's just a clear glass. This is a conservation clear. Okay. She's got some artwork and she didn't want it to um, fade. That fits in there like that. Now, I, is this a ready-made or did you make this frame? This frame is a ready-made. Okay. She picked a ready-made frame for this one. This one I'm showing the mats. It's showing three different colors. We got the, uh -huh. the blue and then the rust color and then the white on top. You do something to accent your picture. Yeah, even I can tell that's pulling out some of the colors in the picture there. Yeah, so then after I, I cut the mats to the size I need and then that fits in like this and you got a backing board. And the backing board's just to offer support, correct? Yes, yes, to keep it all in place. 
So that goes on like this. Then I will, since this is thicker than my frame, I will screw these on here like this. It's these like are like little offset. clips. Yeah, it's an offset. And I will screw them on like that. That'll hold the picture in. I will also cover, after I get the offsets put in, I will cover the whole back with paper, brown paper, and then put the wire hanger on it, and then it'll be ready to go. How long does it take you to do something well, with a ready-made frame and cutting the matting out? How much time do you have involved, say, in this particular picture, which just is a standard size picture? Probably for this one, I probably have three hours involved. Really? Yeah. Wow. Just a lot of it's and just getting the matting cut out. And yeah, measuring and cutting the matting and putting the matting together. Yeah. Okay. Now, while I'm thinking about it, uh, let's talk uh, your store hours. My store hours are Tuesday through Friday, 9.30 to 5.30, and Saturdays, 9.30 to 2. I am closed on Sundays and Mondays. You need some time off because you're a one-woman shop, right? Do you have anybody that comes in and helps if you want to take a vacation or a few days off? I do have two people that come in, two friends that come in, and they help out. And if I need some time off for whatever, sickness, funeral, whatever, you know, or vacation, yeah, I do have yeah. people come in. I was going to say, if not, you'd almost live here, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> sometimes it seems like that. <laughs> okay, well, we're going to come back in just a minute and uh, take a look at some of the other things offered here at Granny's Corner on uh, South Broadway here in Greenville. As you watch the Our Town series, as we take a look at uh, Main Street Greenville and the stores and businesses that make up the downtown area of Our Town, Greenville, Ohio. We'll be back in just a moment. Something I didn't know was offered here at Granny's Corner is a puzzle selection. And earlier you said quite a few people now have gotten the UCID that you carry puzzles and it's become an important part of your business. That's correct. Um, puzzles are, especially the last three months, have been a big booming trend just because of the weather being bad people can't get out uh -huh. so it's a lot of a winter sport for a lot of people that can't get out and i sell lots and lots of puzzles um, and i frame lots of puzzles a lot of people they are such pretty pictures that a lot of people want to put them up because it's kind of their artwork they put it together they took the time putting it together they don't want to tear it down so they i mount excuse me i mount it and um, we frame them Wow, I didn't realize that. And you've got, I mean, you've got small puzzles, big puzzles. I mean, here's a thousand piece, 500 piece. Uh, it goes on and on and on. And a lot of them are just really intricate, too, it looks like. I mean, I'd go crazy. This is one of my things I cannot do. I'm not mechanically or, or whatever you call this, artistically inclined to put this together. Patience is patience. what? Yeah, patience well, I don't have that. Word. <laughs> patience is the word to put some of these puzzles together because, like I said, I have, they range from, I have kids' puzzles, wood puzzles, and they range from about 24 pieces. And I have some for more kids, which 100 pieces, 200, 300. And I've got them all the way up to 2,000. I've had some customers come in and ask if I could get in some 2,000 piece puzzles. And so I have, and it's more challenging than I could ever do. Well, now, is that a fairly good sized puzzle or is it just really small pieces? Smaller pieces. Yeah. Just shoot it's, me now. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah it's, a, it's a fairly large puzzle, but yet still, it's um, smaller pieces. Yeah. yeah. Hey, you know, I, I was pretty pleased with myself. I got a puzzle a couple years ago, and I think I put it together in like three or four days. I was really pleased because in the box it said two to four years. <laughs> and, and so... <laughs> I think you got the years, yep. <laughs> they were like big pieces, they're like six of them, I think, but I got them put together, all right. So anyhow, and then uh, all these different puzzles, and then you've got all these pictures, too. This is a pretty good sized picture here. This is uh, what we're looking at here. Oh, this is a Steelers, yeah. Kind of hold this up. She's got tons of Ohio State and Steelers and everything. I have a lot of sports memorabilia, a lot of Ohio State, Reds, Steelers, um, some New England Patriots. Bengals. Those are Matt Light. Yes, yes, okay. and Bengals and the Browns. Right. I was going to say, and it's pictures not only of the stadiums, but players and just team logos and about everything. You can see. I saw you had an old picture over there of Woody Hayes with Bob Hope yes, when Bob yes. Hope dotted the I at Ohio State for the uh, script Ohio, if I'm not mistaken. And, and so things that way. And then here's a little piggy bank. I, uh, and they call it a piggy bank because it's got a pig inside a Bengals helmet, it looks like, right? Correct, correct. <laughs> and you've got Steelers and everybody else. So, yeah, kind of cool. Yeah, just how would you happen? Just You started just adding things on because the original concept was the frames. Mrs. Anderson didn't have this stuff, did she? Correct. Um, just kind of added on things. When I moved over into this store, 
um, I had a lot more floor space than what I had in previous. So I'm just trying to slowly add things to my store that uh, I feel might be of interest to my customers. Yeah, sure. And that's what it's all about, right? Yes, yes, because not everybody needs to get something framed. And if they do, it might not be every month. So you have to kind of get other business in here to get people to come in regularly and see what you got. And You know, one thing you said that I didn't really think about, but you said the puzzles have really gone big here in the last three months just because of the weather and everything. Is that just was this year or have you noticed that in the last several years when the weather's bad like that, people have more of an interest in putting puzzles together? It has been over the last couple years, and I've been known now since I've been having puzzles for years, and I just um, recently got a larger selection in, and so a lot of people are know, are finding out I've got this large selection. So a lot of people do them in the winter. Some people do them in the summer, but a lot of people are outside doing, enjoying life outside. So in the winter is more of my demand for puzzles but i sell them all year round yeah, okay yeah. and then also i see then you got a big display of different greeting cards uh, birthday cards uh, all sorts of things that way also yes i do i have the name brand leaning tree and then just recently i have gotten some cards that a local uh, photographer put them together and she's got cards that she made with pictures and their bears mill annie oakley parade the Dark County Fair, the Greenville Park. So anybody who wants any kind of local cards, she's done a lot of nice pictures and put them into cards or made them into cards. And so I'm selling those as well. Okay. Well, I tell you, folks, get up here on South Broadway, and you're located just down from uh, KitchenAid Experience, uh, right in the middle of the 400 block of South Broadway. In fact, it's uh, basically just across from the Daily Advocate building. Take a look at Granny's Corner here and uh, Julie Kesson, the owner. And hey, Julie, thanks for your time today. This has been real interesting. Is uh, you're just one of the vital components of uh, what's been a revitalized downtown Greenville. Well, I appreciate you coming and welcome everybody to come in stop in see what i've got yeah and that's why we're here doing this show anyhow on behalf of nick schmidt my videographer i'm alex warner and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you here on our next episode as we take a look at uh, the things that make greenville ohio our town as we take a look at main street greenville and broadway and the downtown area in general till next time we'll see you later good night everybody